Hello, my name is George Cairns, and in this video lesson, we're going to look at how to use Digital Photo Professional 4 to counteract colour casts. Colour casts are caused due to the camera's inability to deal with different colour temperatures of light. For example, indoor lighting has a very warm colour temperature, and you can see here we've got a very warm orangey looking shot, and outdoor light can have a very cool cold blue colour temperature, and here's our blue colour cast. So what the camera tries to do when on its auto white balance setting is analyse white in any situation, and if it's too warm, it'll cool it down, if it's too cold, it'll warm it up to get natural looking colours in every shot. Indoors, it's going to try and cool down a warm orange colour temperature and again get a more natural range of colours. And you can do that with an auto white balance setting or you can tell the camera using presets that you're shooting in tungsten light or you're shooting in daylight or you're shooting in shade, for example. So let's take a closer look at this particular shot here. Select it and then go to view and choose edit image window and you can see in the basic panel we've got a white balance setting and at the moment the camera icon there shows us that we use the camera's auto white balance preset to try and get true colours in mixed lighting conditions. But as we have presets in the camera we've also got presets here and we can click and try something else such as daylight and it's going to cool things down a little bit, the photograph's looking cooler overall so let's try shade and shade is cooler than daylight so if we click there it should warm things up and indeed now it's warming up the whole photograph and you can see more natural looking colours in this area. I'm just going to quickly scroll down to the advanced section and I'm just going to brighten up those shadows to reveal more detail and maybe take the highlights down a little bit as well and perhaps give it an overall brightness adjustment or exposure adjustment just by dragging here like so until the histogram spreading more towards the right so now we can see more of the colours that we've warmed up using the shade preset. So if we'd shot on occasion with shade we wouldn't have to make a white balance adjustment in Digital Photo Professional 4 but as you can see when we're editing a raw file it's very easy to change our minds and counteract any mistakes we might have made with the camera setting or indeed if the auto setting doesn't work we can try something manually to get a better looking photograph. And if I click here to compare the before and after, you can see now it's looking quite cold here. And even in the daylight, it's looking cold as well. But we've warmed things up now, thanks to a quick click on the preset drop down menu here. And one last thing, by revealing these areas here with the shadow slider, it's worth boosting color saturation as well, just to make a more colorful end result, especially in the shaded areas like so. So that's how we deal with colour casts in mixed lighting conditions. Let's go back here to have a look at some other colour cast problems. Let's go indoors now. Take this shot here. It's called Warm Start. Let's pop up to view and let's go to Edit Image Window. Now indoor artificial light has a warmer colour temperature and that can create rather orange colour casts, which is particularly problematic when you've got orangey looking skin tones. It doesn't look very natural. So you should be able to set the camera's preset to something such as tungsten light, which we can see down there. But by mistake, we've set it to cloudy. So cloudy is warming things up and it's warmed up the shot even more to create this orange colour cast. But again, that's very easy to fix. You could either try auto and it's going to do a fairly good job like that, much more natural looking colours, or you could go to tungsten. And because it knows tungsten light has got a particular colour temperature, it's counteracting that to create a more natural looking colours. In this scenario, it looks slightly greener than we had with auto. So what you can do is go to fine tune things. There's green up there. So if we drag it down away from green to this area here, it's adding a bit more magenta, which counteracts the green. We could use this slider here as well, and that's creating more natural looking colors. I need to just brighten up some of those shadows again. So let's just drag this to the right a little bit, like so. And you can see we've just quickly fixed things using a preset, and as well as counteracting the orange color cast, we've got rid of a tint as well. We had a slightly green tint in the image, and we fine tuned it using this little control here, or by sliding a slider here from the green towards the magenta just to get rid of that nasty green tint. So there's lots of different ways of counteracting colour casts and also getting rid of tints as well. And we can compare the before and after to see quite a dramatic difference there thanks to the tools in Digital Photo Professional 4. Now we might have a series of shots taken in these lighting conditions with the same camera settings. So it might be worth registering those adjustments by clicking here to register a personal white balance setting. So we can set that to destination one, which is this little option here, or we could set it to three if we like, so we can tackle this tricky tungsten light scenario. And then we can click save like so. And let's call this one tungsten. Or you could label it after the location if you like. Let's call that one TM for Tate Modern. And let's just click save like so. And then click OK. 
And now if I click here to reset our white balance adjustment, I can always go back to button three now and click to apply my preset to my photograph or any other photographs in this particular location. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go back here to go back to my main window. And let's say we've come from the Tate Modern out onto the South Bank. Let's go to view edit image window and oh no what's happened is we've forgotten to change it from tungsten which is our preset for shooting indoors in warm orange light so it's cooling things down and daylight's already cold so it's even colder now and it's looking really cold and blue so what we could do quickly is just to go to auto and it's automatically analyzing the photograph and it's warming up the colors accordingly now because we've got light and shade we've got slightly different color temperatures going on here so what you could do is just reset it and then make a manual white balance setting by going to click white balance choosing the eyedropper and then we can sample an area that should be white in the direct sunlight and that's cooling down the rather warm colors there but it's making the shadows look a little bit too cold and blue so i'm going to go and sample a white window frame in the shadow area and that is warming this up to create neutral whites and we've now got slightly warmer looking shadows and indeed warmer highlights as well of course and that's a slightly more attractive shot with less cold color casts in the shadows so it's very useful to be able to make a manual white balance adjustment using the eyedropper tool so let's pop back to edit image and finally let's look at this shot here go to view edit image window and lights temperature is measured in degrees kelvin and this shot here is fairly accurately balanced but we can actually go down and fine tune the color temperature by using a color temperature slider based on degrees Kelvin. You can type in a value here. Um, daylight's about 5,600, so that's going to be a little bit warmer. If we go down to the left here, you've got a colder color temperature, and to the right, we can warm things up. And I'm just creatively warming it up to create a more idyllic summer scene in a little English country village, like so. So that's a manual white balance made using the color temperature slider in degrees K or degrees Kelvin.